Hi guys, Jason here again today with you guys and thank you once again for coming back and watching. Today we're going to be introducing plants. Um, now in our segment of plants today, we're going to be learning how to care for them, how to nurture. I brought in plant expert Karina and she will be helping us today with the pro tips on what's the best way to care for our plants. Karina and today we're going to be talking about my top three favorite houseplants. So when we talk about easy to grow, super low maintenance and virtually indestructible, we're going to talk about my first favorite plant, the snake plant. Then to follow that up would be the Z plant. And lastly, with the silver satin pothos, this plant is actually one of my favorite plants because it's just beautiful. It's pretty to look at. When the light hits it, it has a silver satin that you can see, a sheen. And what's really cool about this plant is that it removes most toxins from the air. It's an air purifying plant and it's super easy to take care of. You could place this plant pretty much anywhere in your office, in your house. It could grow under medium light, under shaded light, and it also really likes indirect light. The second plant that we're gonna be talking about today is going to be the snake plant. The reason why I love this plant so much is because it's super easy to take care of. This plant, in the winter time especially, you literally just have to water it a few times a month. A few times a month not every day just a few times a month this plant does not like to be overwatered. as a matter of fact that's one of the main reasons why some of these plants mainly house plants die is because you're overwatering it but indoor plants are usually super easy and super low maintenance that's why I love them so much so another great thing about the snake plant is that it also purifies the air. So it removes toxins from the air as well as the pulpit. Lastly, the last plant that we're gonna be talking about today is one of my favorite plants is the seed plant. So the seed plant is also an indestructible plant. It's super hard to kill. You don't need to water this every day or every week. As a matter of fact, you only need to water this plant when you see that the soil is dry. And a way to figure that out is just by putting your finger in the soil just feeling the soil and once you go one inch in if you see that it's dry you could just water it one time and leave it alone for the next few weeks especially if you live in colder areas you don't want to overwater this plant because this plant doesn't need a lot of care you could just plant it anywhere in your so the z plant just like all the other plants that we were speaking about it's also a super low maintenance plant it does prefer it does it does prefer medium for medium light but it will tolerate low to indirect light or shade light so like i said before a reason for some of these plants to die is by overwatering it this plant, you only need to water it again just a few times. I'm going to be asking Karina some questions today as to basic questions that come to our minds when we're either going to become plant holders or we already have plants at home that we just don't know how to care for. And my first question for you, Karina, today is how do we choose a plant? Either if I'm in a department store or if I'm going to a nursery to buy a plant, how would I choose the perfect household plant for myself? The best way to choose a plant for me would be to really just ask yourself first, what type of lifestyle do you live? Because plants have different personalities, just like people have different personalities. So if you live a super busy lifestyle, you definitely want one of these type of plants because these plants are specifically low maintenance, super easy to take care of. So if you don't have that much time to take care of your plant, those are things that you need to ask yourself. So before you go into the department store, do a little research on um, what type of plants are good for also your environment, where you live. Do you live in an apartment? Do you live in a house? Do you live in New York or do you live down south? It depends on your zone areas. Is it hot? Is it cold? And so forth. Um, one of the, my main concerns when I'm buying house plants is that I have a lot of very poor lighting. And um, I also have... Um, bare to minimum windows i only have a window in the bathroom and just a small window in the kitchen uh, how, what type of plants do you think i can get with low lighting because i don't know how to really how to think i can give it that proper natural right, sunlight right. so the really good thing about um these plants like i said is that all of these plants could be planted could grow in low light 
So even if you have very minimal lighting, you could still have these plants at home, but also you could get a grow light. So just to add that extra boost that it needs. So all you do, um, get a grow light. You could also use a super inexpensive light bulb, a regular light bulb that's LED also works as a grow light. Oh wow, so um, so there's specific light bulbs that can almost mimic sunlight? Exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. So I also wanted to ask, what's the perfect way or things that I need to look for when I'm buying a plant? Uh, because I hear about these drainage holes. Um, what is ex what exactly is that? And um, does it um, specify um, in if I have a different plant, if I have a cactus, if I have an air purifying plant, what, what would I be looking for? So when you buy a plant, you definitely want to make sure that your pot has drainage holes. So the drainage holes would be the little holes that you see on the bottom. If you don't see that the pot has drainage holes, usually it'll come something like this. So this is an aloe vera plant, which is also has really great health properties. So the pot that's inside of this has to have drainage holes. All of your pots have to have drainage holes because that's what's going to allow the water to fully go through the plant and um, supply all the nutrients that it needs to the roots. Okay, that's perfect. Lastly, I definitely want to ask you, just for some pro tips, how do I care for a plant that I can see that is not maturing well or that I can physically see that it's dying and I think that my alternative is to go ahead and throw it out? What would I do then? Um, okay, so that's actually a really, really good question, Justine. So the really cool thing about plants is that they literally tell you what they need. So if they need a little bit of water, if they need a little bit of sun, the leaves will start going down. You will see the plant drop. Certain plants, the leaves start folding, but you could literally look at the plant and tell that it's asking for help. Also, another way to tell is if you see browning on the leaves, like we have this pothos right here. It did get a little browning from overwatering. So that's another way to um, make sure. So sometimes our plants look like they're dead, but plants come back. I hear a lot about root rot. Like, um, so I didn't specifically know what root rot was um, when I got my first plant and I started to die. And usually, what I did is I just picked it up, threw it in the garbage. Right. Um, so, what is root rot? What, how, do, how does that cause? Root rot comes from overwatering your plants from the soil. Sometimes the mixture that you have the plant in the soil is not the right mixture. So, um, if you don't have a lot of perlite, for example, in your soil, your soil could become really dampy and if your plant doesn't like damp soil root rot and also if you overwater your plants that's the easiest way to kill it wow that's amazing thank you so much karina no for problem. teaching us today and taking from your time um with just pro care tips on plants for beginners thank you guys thank you Hi guys, so now we're going to go ahead and repot some of our plants so we can teach you guys how to easily do this at home. And uh, we're going to be using this plant here. Karina, you want to explain? Um... Hi guys, so right here we have the Peace Lily and this is the plant that we're going to be repotting today. Um, we have a few examples of some Peace Lilies that need to be repotted because they are root bound that we are going to talk about and teach you guys how to do it. Okay, great. So I'm going to be helping you out today. Um, and where do you want to get started? Do you want to start with cutting here so you can... Yes. So this one, um, this plant is an example of a peace lily that we repotted about two to three weeks ago that look, used to look like this. And now it shot back up because we gave it the amount, the proper love, the care, the water, and the soil that it needed. So we're just going to go ahead move this out the way. And just cut some dead leaves that are, you could visibly see that they need to be cut. Right, so this pot, this piece lily I'm just showing you guys, it came back up. But as you can see, these leaves are crunchy. The yellow leaves, once you have a yellow leaf, it never goes back to green. So you might as well go ahead and just cut them off. So that's what we're going to be showing you how to do with this piece lily. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and 
So us how you'll be cutting some of those dead leaves off. So you go ahead and just grab as much of that root as you can and you're gonna, gonna just snip it close to the end. You're gonna go ahead and snip it there. Um, and then you kind of like just walk around, uh, make sure you take any dead roots so it doesn't take away from the nourishing uh, plants that are remaining. So you're gonna try to toggle your way inside here. There we go. So this plant is not quite ready to be repotted. So we're just going to leave it here after we plant. Um, we trim some of the roots that are decaying. And we're just going to leave it. You can actually try to move your finger around. Make sure that the soil is still moist. Not too wet where it sticks together. And not too dry where you can feel the roughness. And then you're just going to go ahead and we're going to place it by the low lighting again. And it's going to bloom beautifully. Okay guys, so this is an example of a healthy peace lily. You see how pretty she is? All the leaves are nice and pretty and shooting up. You know, you do have some that are shooting a little down, but that's because we are, we, we're gonna water her as well with the same when we do repot the other peace lilies. But we wanted to show you an example of a healthy peace lily that is thriving that is happy that gets enough sunlight um as you can see there is new growth right here there are so you see right here this is a new growth this is a new leaf that's going to be coming out really soon it's folded it will be unfolding within a week that leaf will come out now that you guys seen a really good example of a healthy peace lily, we are going to be showing you some peace lilies that need a lot of love. These literally speak to you when they when they need attention. So as you can see, these plants, um, they need a little water and they also need to be repotted. So I'm going to go ahead and just take one out of the pot to show you an example of a root bound plant. So this plant needs to be repotted because if we leave this in the same pot that it's in now, what's going to happen is the roots are going to continue to grow and eventually there's not going to be any soil. So the reason why these peace lilies aren't getting enough water is because this plant is root bound. So when you water it, instead of it nourishing the plant, it just goes it just quickly just goes through because there's no soil, there's nothing to keep the water inside, there's no nutrients that are going to keep it healthy because it's just going straight through the plant. So another important thing that we need to speak about is drainage holes. So when you repot your plant, you want to make sure that you have a pot that has drainage holes because if you don't have any drainage holes in your pot, you won't have anywhere to for the water the water to escape and then that's how you get root rot so you want to make sure you don't get any root rot so let's go ahead and start repotting so these are the plants we're going to be repotting we're just gonna take them out all you have to do is just take the plant take the peace lily just twist it 90 degree angle and usually once they're root bound they just come right out of the pot you don't even have to struggle with it they just come right out so the same thing with this one this one is extremely root bound that's why it just popped out you didn't even have to do anything um and then last one just like that All right, so we're gonna hold. I'm just gonna put them on their side. So you can use a knife, you can use gardening tools. Um, I like to use my hands, but if you, just be really, really gentle when you do this. But what you wanna do is just try to separate, like try to find the crown. That's another easy way to do it. If you follow and just find the crown, 
you'll find that it'll be easier that way. So, go. I said a whole bunch of stuff. So this one is giving me a little bit of hard time. We're just gonna put this one aside for now and just move on to the next one. That's one thing, guys, that I have learned to do. If you find yourself struggling with a plant, try not to get frustrated. Um, Cause plants are like people. So just gently put them aside and just move on to the next thing. So you see that? And then you see the soil? We're gonna be using this again. We don't want to waste anything. So we're gonna be using everything. Now let's do this one. The grown thing. This is an example of the soil that we're going to be using. This is actually just a collection of a bunch of soil that from plants that we've been repotting just to show you how guys how easy it is. Just make sure that you have enough perlite. So the white rocks that you see in the soil is perlite. Perlite helps drainage and aeration in the plants and in the soil. So peace lilies do not like soggy, wet soil. So you want to make sure that the soil that you're going to be repotting the peace lily in is, has enough drainage. It's not going to stay soggy and wet because that's not the type of environment that they like to live in. And like we said before, has a lot of perlite. So the little green balls that you guys see here, these are actually nutrients. So nutrients, um, you could buy nutrients at your local nursery, at a Home Depot, Lowe's, um, Amazon. But yeah, this is what um, nutrients that are that's already in the soil because like I said before this is just a collection of soil that we have that we're always using here at the studio so next these are the pots that we're going to be repotting the peace lily in so another quick tip guys just to show you how easy gardening and repotting can be these pots we got for free so the how to get free pots is honestly going to Lowe's or going to Home Depot and just asking them for their used supplies. So once um, Home Depot, any local nursery, once they um, their plants start growing out of the pot, they repot it and then they put this away. They either throw it away or they put it aside for other plants. So what you can do is just kindly ask them for where they'll where you can find them at and they'll tell you usually they're by the dumpster or just ask the nursery um manager and they'll just give it to you all right so again so six inch pots these are six inch pots right now the peace lilies are growing in four inch pots so we're going to repot them from this to a six inch Okay guys, so we went ahead and um, did the first one. We're gonna show you that after we repot these other two. So this soil right here is the soil that we were able to release from the root bound peace lilies. So we're gonna go ahead and now repot these. So these are the bigger pots that we have are reusable, repurposed pots that we're gonna be using. So we did put some of the soil back in here. And now what you wanna do is get your other soil. So the soil that we spoke about prior with the perlite and um, just regular garden soil with enough perlite for drainage. And you just wanna put that in a quarter in. And then what I like to do is just take the pot and then just take your fingers and like dig a little hole. See, like just make a little hole in there and then take the plant. I'm just gonna go ahead and just snip that off. 
or any little dead leaves, crunchy things that you see that you know you don't need, just go ahead. This is the perfect time to just take it off. And just put the pot in. So now, now we're just going to fill it up. I like to hold my plant up while I'm doing this. And then what you do is just take your hand and push the soil down. So that's our first piece, Lily. So guys, again, they look a little sad, but I promise you after this and a little bit of water, they're gonna come right back up. So we're gonna do the same, the same thing for the second plant. So you wanna make your little hole and just put the plant inside. Again, see the yellow leaves, just go ahead and Take them off. And honestly, sometimes guys, you're gonna have to sacrifice some leaves when you're repotting. So like you see these, you could just go ahead and take them off too. Cause when you put the, put the new plant back in the pot, more than likely they're, you're gonna bury them anyway. So if there's no purpose for them, you might as well just take it off. I mean, that's my opinion to each his own, but that's what I like to do. So just give it a little pat down to make sure the soil is really compressed inside of the pot so you don't have to worry about, you know, the plant coming out. The plant should be sturdy. And that happens only when you push the soil down. If you just put soil in and don't actually push it down, pat it down, the plant is going to fall out. So this is the final 
This is what your plant, this is what our plants look like after we repotted them. Um, so like I said, guys, now all you have to do is just give these plants a little bit of water. Now after that you repotted them, leave them alone depending on where you live. Peace lilies don't like a lot of water. They don't like to be super wet. They don't like their soil to be super wet. That's why we mentioned that we need the perlite to have sufficient drainage inside of the soil. But yeah, super simple, super easy. Um, remember guys, the stuff that we speak spoke about, you would get these pots anywhere. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them. You don't have to spend money at all. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy.